Yeah, welcome back. So we are going to look at sustainable plastics, wherein we are going to cover categories of uh, bioplastics, biodegradable and compostable plastics. So biodegradation is the degradation material into simpler molecules or simpler lower molecular weight products, right? They would include water, they would include carbon dioxide. And of course, we are talking about the large part, which is biomass by the action of, of course, naturally occurring microorganisms under normal environmental conditions. We are not talking about stipulated environmental conditions. There are four different environments, each of them having their unique set of you know, microbial culture. Like uh, we have soil environment, we have aquatic environment, uh, there is a landfill environment and there is a compost environment, right? So these are four environments. And as I told you, these environments are going to play a very important role based on the microorganisms that are there in it, right? So they will have different rate of eating up uh, or, you know, decomposing the polymer. So based on that, they will have a central role in the degradation of the material. Now, when we look at biodegradation, it's not a very new terminology since ancient times, a systematic reduction of organic matter to fertile humus, that is a soil-like material serving as a soil conditioner was known to mankind as a composting material, right? So it dates back centuries ago where we are using organic matter, turning it into fertile humus and adding it to soil in the form of a soil conditioner. Biodegradation is the most acceptable means of solving many environmental issues related to non-biodegradable polymers, right? Microorganisms biodegrade organic materials by the use of their enzymatic apparatus. So various enzymes may degrade the polymer. However, microorganisms have not had time to adapt to synthesize polymer-specific enzymes capable of degrading and consuming synthetic polymers of recent origin. In fact, so enzyme activity is inhibited by the hydrophobic character of the plastic and its high molecular weight. Let us look at an animation uh, for uh, biodegradation in the next slide. Let us look at an animation to try and understand the mechanism of biodegradation better. The first stage is known as biodeterioration, wherein the polymers, which are long chains of repeating units or monomers, undergo chemical, mechanical and physical change as a result of microorganisms biological activity on the surface of the material. The observatory change will largely be the mechanical property loss due to the chain scission. During the second stage of biofragmentation, the continued microbial activity leads to the breaking down of polymers into oligomers and monomers, which is the intermediate and starting materials respectively. Here, the changes would be more visible over the surface of the material. There could also be a loss in the mass of the polymeric material itself. The biofragmented compounds or microplastics as we call it of high or low molar mass are worked upon by extracellular enzymes by either biotic or abiotic hydrolysis after which the intracellular enzymes take over in the third stage. Assimilation marks the third stage wherein the biofragmented compounds are utilized by microorganisms and are converted into the end products of the biodegradation process such as carbon dioxide, water and biomass. It would lead to further deteriorated surface and mass loss respectively. There are two types of microbial degradation. One is aerobic, one is anaerobic and we are going to look at both of them. So aerobic biodegradation is a process where microorganisms responsible for carrying out the decomposition use oxygen as a part of respiration for consumption of nutrients. These are the differences between uh, aerobic and anaerobic. If you look at the figure, it is very easy to understand that we are basically, uh, in one case, we are pumping the air from inside to outside. This is a heap, basically. And wherein in the other case, you are using the pump as a reverse, you know, methodology to maneuver and suck in air from the environment into the heap. So this is to make sure that material is getting enough amount of air. And by that means, it is getting enough amount of oxygen. So these are examples of aeration which are done in aerobic biodegradation. Now, this is the classification of polymers. So there are four categories that you can see over here. So if I look at this category, this is fossil fuel based and non-biodegradable. Everything that we use today in general. Now, this category, which is uh, in the yellow color is bio-based but non-biodegradable. Then uh, plant oil based, thermosets, epoxies as well. And uh, natural rubber is one of the materials which is non-biodegradable, but it is bio-based in nature. Moving towards on this quadrant, you would find this is what we want, bio-based and biodegradable. So this is what people totally call as sustainable fully sustainable, right? 
and this one is fossil fuel based and biodegradable so polyglycolic acid is there polycaprolactam pbat polybutylene succinate so this is very important to understand that not all bio based materials are biodegradable now we we'll look at certain polymers so this is 100% natural biopolymer which are inherently biodegradable the first one is natural rubber so natural rubber as we all know is a cis form of 14 polyisoprene that you can see here wherein uh, all both of these uh, ch2 are on the same side uh, as opposed to trans right and uh, the tree where wherein you are going to get natural rubber is hevia brasilia and cis tree but then recent research has said that there is something which is growing in southwest united states and northern mexico it's not a very big height uh, it's it's just a shrub which is going up to 1 meter and uh, you would find that uh, this is another source of natural rubber latex right rubber materials where they are going they are predominantly the market is into tires so it's a tire uh, industry is very strong find there are uh, some non tire solid components also and there is some latex products which goes into non tire products like belt hoses then there is footwear which is consumer and industrial molded and extruded goods so all these kind of uh, these piping and all then uh, sponge or micro cellular uh, materials like uh, your shoe soles then a lot of it goes into adhesives sheeting mats uh, so these uh, sort of gym uh, mats and everything then we are talking about flooring tiling uh, something like floor which is used for uh, play areas right so to improve the knee jerk effect now we look at the different category of bio based and biodegradable so first one is polylactic acid so let us consider this starting point it's a circular cycle natural carbon cycle so carbohydrates are extracted from plants they are fermented and uh, what you get out of it is lactic acid which is the monomer it is polymerized and it's a step growth polymerization which is a condensation polymerization and you get aliphatic polyester if you add water to it it will hydrolyze and what you get is again what was used for synthesis that is lactic acid and you would get different lactic acid based oligomers which are again low molecular weight products and when microorganisms are going to attack this oligomers and the monomer that is there it is going to get converted into carbon dioxide and water now photosynthesis of plants is going to carbon dioxide is going to be consumed by plants and again water is going to be consumed by plants with the effect of photosynthesis it gets converted into new plants where you take again carbohydrates and you keep on carrying this natural cycle okay so this bio polyethylene is uh, an example of uh, bio based and non biodegradable right so where you see sugar cane sugar beet starch crops so you collect sugar from here convert it into glucose pass it through aerob anaerobic fermentation stages uh, you convert it into bioethanol distilled bioethanol you get uh, azeotropic mixtures of uh, ethanol hydrous ethanol and then by dehydration you are then going to convert this into bioethylene and polymerize it into bio polyethylene but as said you would find biodegradability is not there right there are other materials as well pvc then there is ps puk this is industrial component compostable products which meet en 13432 so this is a european standard which is very popular so the first two initial characters that are there in the certificate uh, will tell you what exactly uh, is the material so 7p and 7g which is a product from compostable material for industrial composting 7h and 9l which shows that semi finished products are made from compostable material for industrial composting so this tells you about the product itself right these are some standards across the globe or some labels across the globe so they are certified by different bodies uh, there are european bodies in the european union there is something like tuv so this is okay compost so it can be compostable easily so this is a seedling uh, logo so it can be used so it's a wincote standard then there is dim which is again a european union body this says that the material is compostable this is us fda that is us food and drug administration this says about uh, the material has bio based content this one uh, shows how much bio based content is there so to clarify your bio based content and that will be certified in the certification as per the certification scheme ncs 16785 2016 and you can look at uh, all the companies who have carry these kind of certificates right in this link in particular so these are some of the uh, labels which are there so dian certo and wincote are some of the leading companies who offer these standards